In today's video, I'm looking at a 500 square foot modular home in Utah, which is of course the beehive state. I really think that's a bit of a missed opportunity because every direction I look, mountains. I'm in my hotel room, mountains. I walk to the car, mountains. Even when I'm looking at the show home, mountains off in the distance. It is a really cool place, so it's only fitting that it's a really cool home. Let's go check it out. This right here is the cabana from Irontown Homes. At 14 feet wide by almost 42 feet long, it comes in at just under 500 square feet. I'm gonna take a look around this thing, tell you a couple things that I like about it, and then at the end, I'm gonna tell you the price, which based on the comments of one of my last videos, I think is gonna surprise some people. Let's do it. You know what? Let's get down to brass tacks. I'm gonna lay the pricing out right here at the start of the video because I don't think that many people are gonna be upset. Sure, some will, but that's the way she goes. This home starts at $118,000 and the one I'm sitting in with every option that you see inside of it goes for $140,000 and that includes delivery within 250 miles of the factory right here. So if you're going outside of that, you're going to have to dig a little deeper in the old coin purse, but that's to be expected. Say you want to ship it across the country. Well, cough it up. If you haven't heard of Irontown, they're a modular home builder located in Spanish Fork that have been building homes for over 40 years. I was able to get a tour from their plant manager Cam who told me all about their process and believe it or not, it starts with the floor. They're building out of a 70,000 square foot facility that has a certified flat floor. Meaning from one side to the other, it's within an eighth of an inch and that allows them to build with incredible accuracy. On the factory floor, they had an employee housing project, high-end single family homes, and a four unit condo building. Being a mid-sized factory allows them to build a variety of projects while maintaining a level of efficiency that results in homes being built in 12 weeks from start to finish. I only found out about Irontown in the last half of 2023, which is a bit shocking based on some of the stuff they're building. They have got a lot going on. The Cabana 500 located outside the factory is a perfect example. It's a nicely optioned modular that I think people are gonna be excited about. This thing has some serious curb appeal, starting with the covered porch and a laundry list of upgrades. Speaking of options, one of my favorite on the entire home is this door on the front. But wouldn't you know it, it's also one of the most expensive. So this door will set you back $8,000. So right away, that takes you from 118 to 126, just about had a stroke doing the math. You come in, you close this lever here, and you can close it off, but during the summertime, if you want to open this up fully and eat cheesies on the patio, it's an option. So you just got to decide if the $8,000 is the juice worth the squeeze. I would say yes, but it's a personal decision. You know, the exact total footprint of this home is 497 square feet, and I'll tell you right now, it does feel bigger than that. I don't know if it's the windows and the door on the front. I don't know if it's the width. I don't know if it's because it's not the biggest kitchen I've ever seen in my life, big whoop, but it does feel spacious. A lot of the space is allocated to the living room and then it's a nice big bedroom, which I'm gonna to get to in a second. But all in all, I think anyone that gets up inside this thing is gonna think, huh, this doesn't feel like 497 square feet. Those are just my thoughts. Is this the biggest dining room I've ever seen in my life? No, but is it rare to get a dining room at all in a home that's 497 square feet? I don't know, I would say sometimes, some have it, some don't. I don't know about you, but I'm not looking to make a turkey dinner for 12 and this gives me an easy out. Maybe I order a pie from Papa John's and have a couple of my friends over and one acquaintance. It's perfect. We've got to talk about this kitchen because I think the design works really well for the space. Do you want a huge kitchen in a 497 square foot home? I don't know, you might, I don't. I think what they've done here works really well because there's a lot of space in not a huge amount of space, let me explain. So one of the things that always comes up in the comments is storage. So if we look in this kitchen, we've got upper cabinet here with shelving, lower cabinet there with shelving, two lowers there, two uppers there, a bank of drawers there, that's three drawers, lower cabinet there with shelving, storage under the sink, dishwashers there, and another bank of drawers there. So really there's lots of room for the old bag of flour and the rock hard bag of brown sugar that was used for one recipe that probably didn't turn out. I think this is a queen bed. 
I don't actually have any reference on what me laying across a bed is going to tell me, but I think it is a queen bed. What I really wanted to talk about in here was the windows. You've got windows throughout this entire home, and I think that's one of the reasons why it feels so spacious. I mean, the space allocation with the smaller kitchen is great, but the added bonus of the extra natural light definitely helps this thing out. So you've got the queen bed, maybe, enough room for bedside tables on either side, and then you've got your closet over here. Let's move into the bathroom. There's a couple things that I really like about this bathroom. Number one, the tile floor. As you can see, the tile runs all the way across this bathroom and into the shower. Normally you'd see a little fiberglass shower bottom, but this one has the tile running all the way into the shower, up the wall to the ceiling. And I think that's just a nice touch you don't see enough. Over here, they put a floating vanity, which I think looks great. And then of course, they've got the glass door for the shower which just looks smart. I like that a lot. The only thing I would consider changing about this bathroom, and it would be a simple fix, is behind me. Oops. There's no privacy glass on this window, but if it's gonna be even within a couple hundred feet of a neighbor, I would want some kind of privacy glass on there because even if it's a blind, there's a chance that I'm gonna to forget to put it down, and then next thing you know, I end up on the news. So, privacy glass in this window, then it's a 10 out of 10. To give people an idea of the flow in the home, I'm not about to leave out a good old fashioned walkthrough. Starting off with another look at the front end, which I think looks great. I like a covered porch that also closes off one side. It's a bit of built in privacy that also adds to the aesthetic. The only entrance on the Cabana 500 is on the front of the home through the left panel of the folding door. Inside the door lands directly into the living room and they've furnished the show unit with a couch, chair, and dining table. The living room is a big part of the home and there was definitely more room for furniture and opportunity for different configurations. The kitchen is past the living room and they've got cabinets on both sides of the kitchen corridor and a big window above the sink. If that isn't a must have, it definitely should be. Again, there was ample storage with two drawer banks and what I would consider plenty of cabinets to put stuff away. The bedroom has windows on the corner for natural light, a closet for clothes, and hookups for a washer dryer to wash said clothes right beside the door to the bathroom. The size of the closet is fairly standard, but if you're someone that has a lot of clothes, you could remove the area that has the washer dryer and extend the closet that direction to give yourself a little bit more space. The bathroom is in line with the kitchen on the other side of the home, access through the bedroom, and has a full tile walk-in shower with a glass wall and door, a toilet, and a floating vanity. I like how they ran the tile from the floor to the ceiling instead of using an insert, and I think the black fixtures against the white tile looks awesome. Heading out, we'll get a quick look at the other side of the kitchen, which is where they've got the fridge, stove, and microwave. I wouldn't go so far as to say this is a chef's kitchen, but I also don't think it's lacking in any way, shape, or form. It's a functional layout, and I could see the Cabana 500 working well as an ADU, a cottage, or as a single family home in areas that it'll meet the minimum size requirement. It's a very nice home. If you skip to the end of the video looking for the pricing, <laughs> it was at the start this time, so go back. Long story short, the Cabana at 497 square feet. What do I like about it? I like this section right here. You've got the covered porch, built-in lights, you got the glass sliding door that fully opens on the front, and uh, I like this section, the living room. It's nice and wide open. Enough room over there for my pizza party with one acquaintance, two friends. I like the kitchen. I think the use of space is perfect for the size. It's not taking up too much space, but it also has everything you need and probably then some. I like the bathroom when we get the privacy glass in there. Looking from the outside at my footage after I took that shot, it does have a little bit of privacy on it. You're not looking directly in, but I'd probably prefer something frosted. And I like the bedroom, you know, I think that's a queen bed. It's more than enough space for me. And you've got the closet for my t-shirt. It's a nice layout. Let me know what you think. $118,000 to start as it sits, 140 k And that includes 250 mile radius around the Irontown Modular headquarters here in, where are we? Spanish Fork, Utah. Thanks for watching. Bye.